Welcome to McFly Angler. I've never been a guide, but I still enjoy teaching people how to catch more fish. So join me in this video where I show you how I tie this fly. To start, you need to pair a brass, or a tungsten if you want to go heavier, bead with a 2x long nymph hook. And I'm using these gold brass beads and barbless nymph hooks from Risen. Now an easy way to put the bead on the hook is to place the bead in your hand and bring the hook to the bead. See how easy that was? Okay, after securing the hook to your vise, you want some lead wire. And I like putting it on a bobbin for less waste. Also, the .015 size works for this hook and bead, but you can adjust accordingly. Make your desired amount of wraps with the lead wire. I did eight here. If you want this heavier, make more. Just make sure it's enough to push up into the bead and stabilize it. Now for thread. I like this Vivas 6 aught in black. I've also been known to use red here as well. Start your thread on the hook, and usually I tie it starting right behind the lead wraps, but it didn't happen that way this time. It's really not that important. Just make sure you wrap up onto the lead, and then end once you have smoothed out the section between the lead and the shank. Now we need some brown goose biots. Pull off two biots. As you can see here, they are curved out slightly. You want to line the tips of these back to back so they splay outward from each other like so, and clip off the frayed back to get them to sit against each other evenly. Now measure out the tail about a half a hook shank length, and then switch hands and hold that measurement against the hook. Then I like to snip off the ends so they will rest right up against the lead wraps to help form a smoother taper. Then make a couple loose wraps over the buyout ends to hold them in place. But note, they'll want to spin around the hook shank. So place your finger on one side to hold them and then tighten them down. Start wrapping down the hook shank just shy of the bend of the hook, but periodically tighten with your finger against the biops as you go. Once you get towards the back of the fly, you'll notice that the biops start splaying outward as you tighten them. This is what you want. Make sure they're aligned properly and then try to smooth out the abdomen of the fly with thread wraps. Now we need some copper wire. For this size fly, I'm using medium but adjust your wire size according to your fly size. Find the wire on the side of the fly like so, and make sure the tip doesn't extend past the lead bump. Now build a taper to this fly with your thread. Go up to the bead and then halfway down. Then back up to the bead again and down a little more. Keep repeating this until you form a full but smooth taper on the fly like so. Now wrap the wire with tight and touching wraps. For the first wrap, I like doing it by hand, but after I line the first wrap to my liking, then I use the rotary feature of my vise. Make sure the wire is tight against the previous wrap at all times. Keep wrapping the wire up the hook shank until you reach about two thirds of the way up to the bead. Then capture the wire with tight wraps of thread. Now pull the wire forward and wrap up to just under the bead. And then you can helicopter the wire off without fear of it pulling out the abdomen ribbing. Make wraps with thread to smooth out the thorax area. Now we need some mylar flash. For smaller copper johns, you can use a fine flashaboo like this. Mylar also comes in spools like so with different thicknesses. For today's fly, I'm using the saltwater size flashaboo, which is about the same thickness as a large size spooled mylar. One strand will tie quite a few flies though. Tie in the flashaboo so it's directly on top of the fly. Here, let me turn the fly so you can see what I mean. Now, if it's not directly on top of the fly, it will not fold forward correctly when you finish off your thorax. You can use a hair clip to hold it back out of your way. Now, traditionally, I believe these flies use black thin skin, but you would have to cut them into strips. But they also have this stuff that is stretchy and pre-cut into strips. For this size fly, it's the right thickness, so I'm using it. Now it's called Sew Scud Back if you buy it at a fly shop. Again, this needs to be tied directly on top of the fly, directly over the flash boot. By the way, both the flash boot and the scud back need to be tied back to the wire wraps, but not over them. You can check it by pulling the scud forward so you can see where it will end. Now we need some peacock curl. Pull one strand and pull off the fragile tip like so. Now peacock curl has two sides to it. One is bushy and the other is not. Tie the hurl in on one side of the fly with the bushy side facing downward. As you can see, tying it in this way allows for the thorax to be much bushier when the hurl is wrapped up to the bead. Make sure you make tight touching wraps to make the abdomen as bushy and thick as possible. 
Capture the hurl by making a wrap under it and then over it, <laughs> then under it again and over it once more. Then one more wrap under it and usually it can just break off at the tie-in. This however wasn't cooperating, so if yours doesn't either, just cut it off close with scissors. Now we need some hen feathers. I think traditionally these are tied with quail. The hen works fine as long as it's speckled like so. Find a feather that has the tips more squared and even like this one. Now to prepare the feather. Strip off all the fuzzies like so, leaving just the tip. Stick the feather on the pad of your finger, and then carefully, without cutting yourself, snip off the tip of the feather like so, and this will make a V. Now I found there was too many feathers on the V, so I stripped off even more. You want your V to look about like this. Now place the V on top of your fly, and then with your other hand, stroke the fibers down and rearward. Make sure the feather is directly centered on top of the fly. Now make one or two loose wraps with your thread. I repeat, loose wraps. Then bring the scud back over top and make one loose wrap to hold that into place. Now you can pull the stem of the feather to shorten the tips to your desired length. And I usually like these to be about a hook gap in length when viewed from above. Now make one very tight wrap with your thread to ensure nothing pulls out. And then trim off the feather and scud back closely. Then pull the flash up over the thorax and tie it down with a couple tight wraps. Then pull it rearward and make one wrap in front of it. Then whip finish the fly and clip off the waist. Now I made a mistake here and the scud back was pulling out on the far side of the fly. But I left this in because I wanted to prove a point to you guys. And that point is that the thorax doesn't have to be perfect. We are going to cover it with UV resin. For resin I like using this thick formula by Solares. Put a generous amount on top of the thorax, and make sure this drop extends from the bead head all the way back to the copper wire. Yes, touch the copper wire with that drop. Then you're welcome to use a bogkin to adjust the resin slightly. And when you're happy with it, then zap it with your UV light to harden it, and your copper john is finished. Like always, if you have any errant fibers, just clip them off to make the fly look pretty. But as you can see, that mess up with the scud back is almost not visible anymore. That UV resin really covers up any imperfections. So don't overthink this fly. I mean, it's a flashy attractor pattern that sinks quickly. It's fun to tie, and that's how you should look at it. Have fun with it, and it doesn't need to be perfect. So as you probably saw, I used a few products by Risen. They make excellent fly rods and reels, as well as really nice hooks and other materials at excellent prices. And I was able to work out a deal with them as well, to get you guys all 15% off at checkout, just for being my subscriber. So type in McFly at checkout when you order anything from www.risenfly.com. Okay, well you guys have a great weekend. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.